Namaste. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Dragon Time. Now, at the beginning of this video, I did a chakra clearing that I will do again at the end of this video, and I will do an explanation of what it is I was doing and why. <clears throat> Basically, it was to help me get centered and grounded and in the space to do this show for you, or to do this Dragon Oracle reading for you today. So, a little background about today's energy. We are in the Libra energy still. There is also a full moon coming up. So the cards that I draw today will also have the intent for messages, guidance, etc. for um, for the full moon and that particular energy. Also Something else I would like to mention is that this particular energy that we have been working with lately, and especially today, is all about innovation and change. Oops, pardon me. I need to look at my notes to keep me on track. So hang on a second. So with innovation and change, there is a great deal of resistance. And I am not exempt from that. Being a Taurus, I do have issues with that. You know, Taurus is very stubborn and <laughs> Yeah, that nature in me really comes out when I'm being asked to change something. I've been working with that quite often for a very long time, getting better at it. Because change is inevitable. There is a law in physics that says nothing is created or destroyed. It only changes form, state, energy. So I'm always learning how to flow with that change. And I would say lately, all week long, I've been shown lessons by the universe about change and changing and flowing with the change. I was successful sometimes in learning my lessons, sometimes I wasn't. Um, as a I'd like to share a personal story, I, I guess, about um, actually something that happened today. I went through all of my clearing, grounding, meditation to get ready for this video, had a nice breakfast, got ready to go out and listen to my spiritual pep talk that I listened to on my morning walk. And while well, I've been feeling going down this path near my house, I enjoy it, but I was getting bored with it, and in my heart, I knew, I knew a change was probably necessary, Get gain perspective, you know, see something different, right? Well, I was just going to keep continuing on that path, and I got blocked by construction. My first instinct was to, like, freak out and go into crazy mode, say, oh, it's happening to me, you know, I want to go down this trail, why can't I, I, you know, I was resist, resist, 
I was resisting that change. Well, universe, yeah, that was a lesson there. I stopped, grounded myself, went back to center and realized, oh, this is a lesson. I can take a different path, literally and figuratively. Don't have to go down this one. Why am I resisting that change? So I backed out, took a deep breath, and I went a different way, which actually gave me the insight for this, I guess I'm gonna call it a pep talk before we do our Dragon Oracle reading. As I was listening to the pep talk I listened to, it gave me insight on what to actually talk about and come from a personal experience, viewpoint, and vantage. And so yeah, I'm just gonna thank you universe for that lesson. And like I said, I am a Taurus, and so yeah, <laughs> Taurus energy, while we can be very stubborn, the flip side of that is tenacity and when we wholeheartedly believe in something and it's coming from the heart, we don't back down. So yeah, um, and you know, Libra that coming into balance with that energy, that could be a balancing thing The with the Libra energy, you know, balancing the just outright tar stubbornness with you know, staying the course and finishing a project. So, you know, those are the two polarities of this energy. And it's important to be somewhere in the middle. Um, something else that came up on my walk was comfort versus belonging. So, you know, as a Taurus, I'm very, I get stuck in my comfort zone. And then I feel like, and then I get confused, well, it's comfortable, so I belong here. But in reality, I don't. I belong expanding into other areas of <clears throat> this physical human experience. And if I stay in that comfort zone, you know, my heart is going to be dissatisfied after a while and want something more. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, comfort and belonging, I guess, from my understanding or what I've learned and experienced are, I guess, two different things. Um, and I've been continually over the last three years pushing myself out of those comfort zones and one of them is this YouTube channel another one was last year the year before that teaching classes where I talk about my art and the concept behind it and then teach someone how to create a piece that I've worked on and finished so there was that and yeah the now my next step in the evolution and breaking out of my comfort zone is, is this channel and I have been met with so many roadblocks. I actually recorded a video yes, the day before yesterday and there were lots of roadblocks in the middle of that during its production and then when I went to upload it the night before I went to bed, uh, well, Let's just say <laughs> it disappeared. Like I was typing the description, getting ready to upload it, and my screen froze. And then I kept hitting buttons, resisting that change. <laughs> Cause I guess there were probably aspects of that video that weren't my best. And maybe uh, that was a lesson for me to pull out and try a different approach 
And so, well, you know, long story short, it has swept me because of other things that were happening in my life that I was resisting change on and not going with the flow on. And then that was like one of the dominoes that toppled over and then I had a massive breakdown and then of course that led to a breakthrough but I could have avoided that breakdown entirely or lessened it by not resisting the change and going with the flow. Uh, let's see, we talked about comfort and expansion and the personal experience. Okay. So another thing that came up in my morning walk today that resonated with me in the pep talk I was listening to, um, is that we need to learn how to accept the innovation and change that is wanting to happen and happening for us and feel good about it, even when it is uncomfortable. Um, and something in this pep talk I thought it would be a nice exercise to do if you choose to do so. I may later on is writing down or answering this question. Um, what does change what does feeling uncomfortable or the word uncomfortable mean to you? And I think I'm going to innovate this exercise so I don't have to try to remember exactly <laughs> what was said and, and all that. Uh, if you choose to and you have a journal or a piece of paper, if you just want to think about it, you could write down the word change and innovation. And then underneath that, write down the words feels good. And then um, underneath that, just contemplate what would make you feel good about this change? And how, um, and how can you believe in the best? you know, believe the best of the situation, how, what can you do to, to make that switch in your brain, in your ego, to allow for that to happen. And then just contemplate that, think about it, maybe journal further if you would like to, and you feel guided to. Just some things to think about for this energy and today's energy and how to navigate through that based on all the points that I have brought up so far. So, um, before we get started with the actual reading, I always like to do affirmations that I find and my readings and my journaling that I do in the morning. So let's see. All right. So I will start with these affirmations. You can write them down. You can 
contemplate them later, write further, think about them, or just meditate on, meditate on them and use them as a reminder. When you get thrown off track and an innovation or change comes your way and it makes you feel uncomfortable. I am allowing my heart's belief to guide my day. I am interested in relationships that are aligned with my heart. I believe the universe will show me what I need to see. Okay, so this is a good one here. Um, while some of these things may be good, it's also good to keep in mind the flip side of that and the other side of that energy and what is trying to happen or what is happening today to push you out of your comfort zone and to innovate is if you need to see something that needs to be changed or that you want to change and that makes you feel uncomfortable, you can, and I'm saying this for myself too, but realize the universe is showing you what you need to see. If that makes you uncomfortable, there is a reason and to not get caught up in that. Stop, pull out, take some deep breaths, think about it, and go into your own heart and ask, well, what do I need to see here? What can I learn from this? And realize that it's happening for you, and then you could say, why is this happening for me? What will help me to feel good and believe in the best how is this experience and what is being shown to me going to ha help me see that and allow that to happen and then the last affirmation I belong in high vibrational relationships because we truly do we, we belong in feeling good, we belong, connected, feeling supported, feeling loved, that and being in our heart. And that is how we manifest, that is how we can navigate through the changes and innovations that are either being shown to us, put in our path, or that we are actually have actually contemplated and thought about and are putting into action. And there's some questions that um, I feel I answered these questions and these are part of the pep talk that I listen to every morning. <laughs> and um, to get you thinking and in the right frame of mind to get the most out of today's energy. Um, like I said earlier, what does the word uncomfortable mean to you? Um, I wrote down um, being in, not being in integrity with my heart. This makes me feel really uncomfortable because I have worked a lot on listening to my heart and connecting with my heart. And my heart knows when I am not in integrity. And that feels uncomfortable. Um... Also, like I said before, looking at and releasing and moving through these tough lessons that are being presented to us, that the universe is showing us for our greater good to help us innovate and change and go with the changes. With, both within ourselves and where we are he evolving spiritually and as a collective. And then one thing I've been working on quite often, this lesson's been presented to me many times in many forms and sometimes the exact same thing, but at a different, I don't know, level, a different... Um, angle um but feeling lack and not having enough i just came out of a major 
lesson in that again. And then, you know, important side note, these lessons will repeat until you move through them and learn the lesson that you need to learn. And that is uncomfortable. <laughs> and then, um, what does it mean to resist change? Okay. Well, for me, I, I, my answer to this question was continuing old behaviors and thought patterns. Because it feels comfortable. <laughs> and so my mind automatically goes there, and that's hardwired into my brain. And I have many teachers I listen to. Joe Dispenza is one of them. That, yeah, if you continue the old behaviors and thought patterns, you're going to keep recreating the same scenario and the same energy and the same life. So then that is a huge form of resistance because your soul wants to change. And not change, not going with that urge to change is uncomfortable. It makes it more uncomfortable than just doing it and going through it. Um, and then I also wrote down doing something either unconsciously, consciously, or out of fear that is not in alignment with not in alignment with my heart. Uh, let's see. And then... And then if you want to contemplate anything that's happening, oh, and also not going with the flow of life, like I said before, you know, not flowing and going against the river it's a lot of work <laughs> it's it's tiring and it's quite uncomfortable and quite literally and figuratively it can be dangerous to your health and well-being for many different reasons um if you want to also contemplate the changes that are going on in the world and as a whole and with the collective that um you have been able to basically kind of ignore and, you know, not look at, but are being coming so like glaring it in your face that you can't avoid it. Well, um, I wrote down the rising cost of living because I've been feeling that crunch for a long time now. I'm not wanting to put that energy out there to make it amplify in any way so I won't give personal examples but I've had many instances where the universe is like look here this is a this is what this is and you need to figure out ways to address it within your own life so that you don't get blindsided when well just get blindsided um and then uh, the last question um, would be, on what level should your emotional comfort be? Like, this is more to raise you up and say, okay, I'm here. Where do I, where do I want to be? And I put down high vibrational and an integrity with my heart. Okay. So, why don't we go ahead and begin with the Dragon Oracle reading. And because it is a full moon energy, the full moon is literally in, it's the sixth, so six, seven, eight, nine, three days. We need to call in the energy and guidance, messages, support 
the dragons that will best do that for us in addition to the energy that's happening within us and the planets and the collective for this day and any other messages that you really you personally need to hear and what's going on for you in your life and before we do that I'm today's chakra is the crown chakra and so <laughs> and so we are going to do some breath work to open up our crown chakra and then before I say the prayer and invite in the dragons and the energy because it is a full moon I already did this this morning before I went on my morning walk after my meditation because I felt called to, but I will do it again for this video to cleanse and create a positive sacred space and for healing and reflection. I will sage myself, I will sage our, the space this is happening in and to clear any energy that I picked up when I was on my morning walk that kind of came in to my awareness and then to my energy and being, especially from the change that happened when I was on my morning walk. And then once that energy has been removed, we want to bring in positive healing energy and I will use Palo Santos for that. So Sage Bundle I bought on Amazon. And this one was given to me, but you can get these at any spiritual store in your area. I will link if you're in the air, if you're listening and watching in your in my area, Kalispell, Montana. Um, then you can go to Wendy's Rainbow and purchase these. I also will link that in the description, as well as any other things I bring in to this sacred ceremony and sacred space. That I feel called to I will link that in there also and um, what was I gonna say oh um, yeah um, so those two things you can purchase there I will talk let me talk about my art today's art piece is titled origins and it's from a series that I did I'm still in the progress of doing it. I have two more paintings left. This one is called Origins and the series is called, um, the series is called Origins, excuse me. And this one is called Creation. So basically a project I worked on when I first started, I'm working, I started working on when I first started painting is a concept I wanted to share through sacred geometry and imagery in the form of painting and art was the birth of and creation and expansion of the universe and us and all that we contain. This is stage two in that evolution where the ball of energy that is was source was amping up, starting to gain momentum and energy and getting ready to expand. And I chose the sacral chakra for that because that is the chakra of creation. You create babies in there. You know, things are created from that energy. So we were born from that energy. It's what propelled and fueled it to occur, and it's the space where it occurred. And it's really no accident that that is where that occurs because when the baby is born, because that is the energy center for that. <laughs> yeah, pretty powerful stuff. Anyhow, um... You can, I will link my Etsy shop where you can purchase this painting and any of the other paintings that I bring into my videos. And then one final thing, if you would like to do Dragon Oracle readings on your own, you can purchase this set at, by Diana Cooper, it's very good, I love it. It does, I mean, her interpretation of the dragons are amazing. 
they're always right on for what I am feeling needing at that time. The imagery is wonderful. The messages are wonderful. And when I read the description from the, of the dragon and the history behind it, it comes out of this book. Then I will expand on that and make affirmations out of the key messages that are on the card. So you can buy this set at the Wendy's Rainbow if you're in Kalispell, Montana. Or I'll also found a link on Amazon and I'll link that too. So why don't we go ahead and get started? So I shuffled my cards. Oh, let me do that. <laughs> Cutting and shuffling. There. Mixing it up. Mix up the enemies. Okay. I think that's sufficient. Okay, so I'm going to put that here. And why don't we go ahead and clear the energy in the space. Since it is a full moon energy that's happening right now. I looked outside. The moon is, it's getting pretty full. <laughs> it's about half. So let's go ahead and I may need another fire stick. Yeah. I'm going to be lighting a lot of sage in the next three days. <laughs> Especially when I come home from work because they have to take a lot of energy there and it's Sometimes not the energy I want to be in and continue to perpetuate into my life and infuse into my life. So it's important to clear that if you don't want it to stick around. There's lots of different ways to do that. I bring in the sage when I feel necessary. I do qigong to move the energy out and then my own breath work. There, I think that's enough smoke. Now, I like to start from the top down with the crown chakra and clearing every chakra in my body as I move down, ending with, of course, the root chakra in the back. And since energy leaves through your feet to facilitate that, if it got stuck in there, you can get it out of your feet. <laughs> it's important to not wear shoes because that will block the energy from moving out. Let me sage the space that we're in. Dream card. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know where I'm gonna. I need a spot to put this. <laughs> okay. We'll just do this here. It's gonna be off camera, but. There. All right. Now. We'll introduce positive healing energy into our inner space and outer space with the Palo Santos. It's not an accident. We're working with fire and smoke here, calling in the dragons. Fire energy which I have considerable amount of. Okay. Okay. Sometimes you have to light these Palo Santo sticks a couple of times. At least the ones that I have here. Smoke doesn't last too long. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let that smoke infuse us during our ceremony or reading. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So today we are, and the, the energy of today is the crown chakra. I'm moving this because, yeah, it kind of echoes when I at it. Okay. 
so what I like to do when I'm doing my breath work, focusing on a chakra, I start with putting my hands in front of my heart in the prayer mode, I guess. And I breathe through all of my chakras and come out through the crown. And I will do that three times now. You can visualize the energy moving up and out, cleansing and clearing all of your chakras coming out into the universe in your aura through the crown chakra and expanding, being transmuted and recycled. the crown chakra if you're sitting cross-legged lotus position half lotus you put you put your hands and touch your four fingers I mean your, your middle finger and your thumb together and press them on your knees and if I'm sitting in a chair and if you're sitting in a chair just press them on your legs and this is where I'm going to put my awareness into my crown chakra. And this will open it up to receive the energy. And will also open up to receive to receive any, you know, energy, messages, guidance that we need based on what's happening and the energy of the day chakra of the day which is the crown chakra but also and we can also clear any stuck energy out of our crown chakra by doing this and then I always chant om as I am working with a particular chakra this is the seed syllable of the universe and it's no accident that it is the main one used in Tibetan chanting and ritual because it is a vibration that connects you with and opens you up to that energy. So I'm going to breathe in all the way up through all of my chakras, resting my awareness in the crown chakra, and I will hold it for, I always hold it, but you don't have to hold it for any number of seconds as long as you're field called to, to get that awareness into that area. And then on the out breath, I will chant home. And then to close it off, I always like to breathe into the crown chakra again, pushing out any stuck energy, especially if I've been working with other chakras, and then let it create a toroidal field around my body of energy for protection and connection. And there's no chanting in this one. Just imagine that energy, an energy that you, we've created through connecting to our heart and then connecting to the crown chakra, transmuting all the energy. Imagine all that coming up through all your chakras again and then out, creating a toroidal field around your body.
Okay, so now let's call in the dragons that will best help us through navigating this energy of change and innovation, the full moon energy, and any other energy we may be dealing with personally and as a collective. Any of the cards that I pull that have come to me will be for that purpose. Myself, everyone watching and listening, the collective, and anyone else who needs that energy. Okay. It's my intention to call in and receive the dragons and energy that are best suited for and will best help us on our journey in this full moon energy, the energy of change and innovation, and the energy of the planets, any of the energies happening today within ourselves, within others, within the collective, and paying particular attention to the energy that will best support us and give us guidance and messages on how to move through the energies of innovation and change. Namaste. Okay. All right. <clears throat> The first dragon we have is the golden solar dragon. Okay. Hello, golden solar dragon. What do you have to tell us today? And how can you help us today? Okay. So the energy of this dragon helps you stand in your masculine power with wisdom. Let your DNA be, rope, be programmed and light codes activated to become an inspired leader. Golden solar dragons are seventh dimensional beings who come from Helios, the great central sun. This is the sun beyond our sun where Archangel Metatron creates light matter that is the foundation of our existence. Helios is the gateway between our universe and the source of all that is. The golden solar dragons from Helios touch us with divine masculine energy. They infuse us with courage, strength, logic, leadership, and the qualities of a peaceful warrior. Leadership and the qualities... Oh, I almost read that sentence twice. They balance us. They then balance us with golden wisdom. All... Okay. All right, all right. Let's do that one again. They then balance this with golden wisdom all at a much higher frequency than we are used to. Working in harmony with the silver lunar dragons, they are activating us all now, illuminating the DNA within us that has been dominant since the fall of Atlantis. We are being intensively reprogrammed in preparation for the new golden age. The golden solar dragon who has come to you now is asking you to balance your life, listen to your inner wisdom, and become a leader. Dare to speak your spiritual truth, hold the vision of a fifth dimensional world, Protect those who are less capable than you are. Protect those who are less capable than you are. With the support and guidance of this dragon, you can be a living example to many people. When you aspire to be wise spiritual leader, remember that true masculine power used with wisdom helps you and those around you feel safe. Helps you those and you around you feel safe. Spend a little time each day focusing on or imagining the sun shining onto your third eye and sense the light codes the golden solar dragons are directing towards you. Okay. Affirmations. I am standing in my own masculine power with wisdom. My DNA is being reprogrammed and light codes are being activated. I am an inspired leader. Okay. 
what needs to come forward with this dragon today? Hmm. All right, well, in order to move with these changes and be an innovator of your own life, and move with the changes that are swirling around us inside and outside. We need to be inspired leaders to lead that energy and direct it in healthy, positive, healing, affirmative ways. Um, so yes, yeah, standing in your own masculine power with wisdom. Um, it's important to not get carried away with the masculine power. <laughs> As a Taurus, I think that's probably something I have issues with. I know I do. When I choose to take my own power back and stand in that power, sometimes it's not wise, and sometimes it's not centered and grounded, and it's important to ground that energy and balance it and no accident I chose this particular painting we have here a whole lot of masculine power coming out and creating the universe um, let's see and you know the Sun is also masculine energy as well so it kind of looks like the Sun um, and the golden soul dragon, that energy is from Helios, the great central sun, hmm. great central sun. Um, something else of note, Metatron. Sometimes archangels come up in these cards and if you have a particular angel you resonate with, um, you can certainly meditate on that if you meditate if you resonate with Metatron which I actually do um, this Archangel shows up in many different places um, I like to burn incense that's actually called Metatron sometimes um, I notice uh, many of these dragons pull in that energy from Metatron which is masculine creative energy um, so we are innovating and changing to create something different. And this dragon will help us with that. Um, mm -hmm. It's also important and makes sense with the Libra energy to balance it with a card that's not drawn here. It may be it will come up in this reading. It will be very profound and amazing if it does. Um, that this energy is balanced with the silver lunar dragon, which is a feminine energy. Yin and yang, you need to balance. If you have too much masculine energy, you will just create and either way you'll wear yourself out, um, create for the wrong, create the wrong things for the wrong reasons, and it may end up creating chaos instead of harmony and, or and order and peace. Uh, let's see. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, we, especially in this energy of change and innovation, we are being re reprogrammed by the energy that is coming down to us from the universe for its evolution. And we were reprogramming our own energy consciously. And so actually what's happening is we're creating together and working with the universe. We're co-creators. We're not going against the natural order and flow of the universe, but we're also not being swept away by it or the other energies that are present in the collective and floating around out there. 
Uh, let's see. So this and this dragon is calling for balance in your life. And yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, I have been needing to balance my life. Well, actually, it's an ongoing process, but becoming more apparent right now in this energy and with everything that's going on within me and in the outer world as they navigate and go through their changes and innovations, that we need to balance our lives. We need to balance this energy. We need to balance... There's a lot of balance coming in in here. Um, but without balance and groundedness, you cannot get in touch with your inner wisdom to become the inspired leader that you and we are all being asked to become. Not only for ourselves in our own lives and our own evolution, but in those that we encounter, those if you have children, which I do, that I'm I guess I'm being called to mention that it's a big thing. Um, if you're not balanced within you and a wise, balanced leader within yourself, you have a hard time doing that with your children, if you have any. Um, let's see. Um, also, speaking your spiritual truth, need to speak your spiritual truth. That's important. We all have our own spiritual truths, our own truths to speak, and our own reason for being here and things to share. It's important to get in touch with that right now and share it. Uh, if you, and then you can also use this energy to support and guide you so that you can be a living example to everyone that you encounter because great leaders do not lead by speaking words and saying things they lead by example so you need to be in integrity with what you say do what you say as much as you are able and you know it's not to say that you need to beat yourself up if you don't do that that was a lesson for you to learn say oh my gosh I did not enact an integrity and I did not I said this but I did the opposite how does that look to the people that are looking up to me being around me listening to me maybe even wishing to receive guidance from me so that's also very important Live the truth that you are speaking. Um, when you use this energy, or when you, yeah, when you use, oh, let me see here. So, true masculine power coming from the heart and not the ego is always used with wisdom and it will always have your best interests at heart and it will always always help those you and those around you feel safe it is not true masculine power coming from the heart if that power does not make you feel safe or those or those around you um so a little exercise that you can do, if you wish, is to go out into the sun. Sit in the sun, let the sun shine on you and your third eye, and receive the light codes that are being directed towards you. Not only on this day with the energy of this dragon, but all the time. So maybe we can, maybe we can do this exercise if we just, um, let's go ahead and put our hands on our third eye. And then as we breathe in and out, we can imagine the light codes and the energy 
from the sun, the great central sun, the solar, the golden solar dragon coming down into our third eye, expanding it and receiving those activations and light codes. any other dragons today that wish to come forward with messages, guidance, wisdom, and support for the energy of today. Oh, throw two cards. So, two and one, huh? No. The first one we have the Alpha Dragon. Okay. Leave this one for next. And the Alpha Dragon. Alpha Dragon. Harness the divine masculine power of creation. Destroy the old, visualize your dream, help manifest a new world. These incredible galactic dragons carry Archangel Metatron's highest light. They helped to create the universe that we live in and continue to breathe the yang energy of manifestation into our world. Because they have a power, the power of physical manifestation, they work with our thoughts when we or the collective mind of humanity are ready to bring something into creation. These enormous and power these are enormous and powerful dragons. They only work for the highest good. As they can build, they can also destroy. They are entering our world now at the end of an old era and the start of a new to facilitate the destruction of that which no longer serves our planet and the construction of a new world at a much higher frequency. Alpha dragons are bringing you a very special message. You are being called to demonstrate creative forces in your current project or experience. So ask these magnificent beings to assist you and know that their masculine energy will empower and strengthen you as you visualize what you want to build. You can also ask these dragons to support you in constructing our new fifth dimensional world. As you hold the vision of the new golden age, they can take your pictures and breathe life into them. This is a card of raw power and creation. So ensure your intentions are pure. Well, imagine that. Um, first of all, let's get into the affirmations. I am harnessing the divine masculine power of creation. And uh, this next affirmation, I don't like to use the word destroy because nothing can be created or destroyed. Um... I like to say transmuted, transformed. So I am transforming the old energy of the past to create new energy at a high, a higher dimensional frequency. Uh, I am visualizing my dream and I am helping to manifest a new world. Okay, well, <laughs> I see a running theme already. Uh, we have a ton of masculine creative energy happening today. 
makes sense because innovation and change requires this. And when we innovate and change, we are creating something new. And also again, we have Metatron showing up. So yeah, um, <laughs> this uh, energy along with Metatron helped to create the universe that we live in and they continued and this energy right here <laughs> is continually 24 7 seven days a week 365 a year into infinity it is breathing the yang energy of manifestation all the time all day long every day even when we're sleeping so um this is a very powerful energy of physical manifestation so it's very important that our thoughts and our actions when we do are not working with this energy they are the intention is pure and it is not clouded by your ego it is not clouded by the programming and energy of others and most importantly through of uh, with fear because you will miscreate you will create things you do not want i speak from experience here i'm getting better at this but you know as a teacher i am still a student still learning um yeah when you miscreate don't you know it's important not to look at it negatively as a bad thing it is a lesson to teach you where and how you miscreate it and wake you up and help you to pay attention to your thoughts your beliefs and your actions it so it's a um i guess everything starts Okay, it starts with it starts with the thought, and that is energy. If you catch it before it moves into the belief stage, then yeah, you then it's a lot easier to back it up and reverse that because the energy has not gained momentum and is not as powerful. So that's why I always say, but don't get hung up on it and don't think you have to go around spending all your energy paying attention to your thoughts. Just be aware of your thoughts. And if something happens to pop in there that is life negating and that does not resonate with you and your heart and what you are trying to do and accomplish and be and it is not for your greatest good then you can notice it and catch it then the another next stage of that is it will turn into a belief and beliefs are a little harder to work around <laughs> i know because i'm a taurus and also because I've had to seriously look at and change and work with changing many, many, many beliefs and programs that I received throughout this lifetime and other lifetimes from my ancestors from everywhere, wherever I was energetically at any point in time. Um, and then also then it transfers, if you do not catch it in those early stages, it will manifest into physical reality through an action, through an ailment in your body, through disease, anything. So you can heal and reprogram. It's easier, well, it's easier to heal and stop the energy and its momentum at this stage. Not to say that you can't when it gets to the action and it actually physically manifests into your reality. 
No, you can do that at any point in time. It just takes more work. And <laughs> more resistance will happen. And yeah, and you can avoid all of that. And I speak from experience by catching it in the thought form. And so that energy and the dragons wished me or was wishing me to bring that to my attention and to your attention. Um, but like, you know, these dragons and their energy all, only work for the highest good. So even if you gain momentum and it builds and it builds and you end up manifesting, creating something into your physical world you don't want, well, then go ahead. When you recognize that, you can still... That was... It happened for a reason. It happened for you to see that you were doing that. Very powerful but uncomfortable lesson. But, you know, this energy can also... I don't like to say destroy, but it will, it, it can also transform energy as well. So the destruction is actually a form of transformation and resetting of the karmic balance. So this energy showing up today, specifically because we are innovating and changing our reality our thoughts, our actions, our beliefs on a personal level, but we are also doing that as a collective. And since the end of the Mayan calendar, 2012, this reset has been going on and building and building and building and it's still continuing to build. And it may seem negative, it may seem bad, and it's extremely uncomfortable at times for many, many people, including me, myself. But we need to keep in mind this is for our good, for our greater good. It's happening for us and not to us. It's important not to get caught up in that. Um, because what's happening is it's the old stuff that we were comfortable in is needing to change because it, it no longer serves our higher vibrational frequency that is happening within us and the planet as it and we evolve in something greater. We cannot take this old energy with us. So it needs to be transmuted. It needs to be transformed. And that, of course, keeping in the theme of what I said earlier at the beginning of this video, keeping in that theme. Yes, it is very, um, it's very uncomfortable. And it is pushing us way outside of our comfort zones. But we need to remember that it is for our greater good. Um, So yeah, this we're being asked to remember also that this masculine energy will empower and strengthen us individually and as a collective as we visualize what we are wanting to build. Um, this could be in your personal life. I want to build my art business, my YouTube channel. Um, my spiritual teaching this masculine energy from this dragon and its energy and associated energies like Metatron that will help me to do that and it will help you too and it will help us as a whole as we are visualizing and building our new creative projects titled Earth 2.0. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Oh, and it's very important, like I said earlier, to remember this is working with this energy and this energy. It is 
raw power and creation. So you absolutely must 100% pay attention to your motives and discern whether you are coming or, or discern whether you are creating and building from a foundation that is pure and the intent is for the greater good of yourself and the rest of the planet, cosmos, universe, all fractal energies of the great central sun. Okay, I'm going to take a drink of water for a minute because, yeah, I need to rehydrate. <laughs> okay, so. Thank you, Alpha Dragon. All right. So I pulled two cards this last time. Not an accident. The card that I pulled, Emerald Dragon. Let's see what the Emerald Dragon has to say about our ascension and our movement through these energies to becoming greater, higher beings vibrating at a much higher frequency. Uh, da, da, da. There you are, 54. All right. <clears throat> this energy and the dragon and its associated energy brings healing and cosmic abundance. Good fortune is coming. Let your thoughts support your divine perfection. Align with your fifth dimensional blueprint. Emerald dragons are wise healers who prepare us to align with our true fifth dimensional blueprint. They work with the mighty Archangel Raphael, the Emerald Angel in charge of the development of the third eye. They clear our emotional body to leave us free to love, forgive, and open our hearts. These magnificent dragons also retune our mental body so that our thoughts support our divine perfection. This allows Archangel Raphael to pour emerald light through our spiritual body so that our physical body aligns with all we can be. They also open, up, open us up to cosmic abundance. Working with Archangel Raphael, they link us through our third eye to Jupiter and its ascended aspect, Jumbe. This is the planet of good fortune and beneficial rewards. The blessings that fall upon us may be financial, but not necessarily, and they are always fortuitous for our ascension pathway. Receiving this card invites you to fill your aura with emerald light so that the emerald dragons can enter your energy fields easily and consume all that no longer serves you. Breathe gently in and out of your third eye so that the emerald dragons can touch and open it. They will start to pull back your veils of illusion. This card indicates that you are ready to receive healing, love, and a cornucopia of wonderful things. So relax at a deep core level and invite these magnificent dragons to bring good fortune into your life. Remember to be grateful for all the good that comes your way. Hmm. Affirmations. I am receiving healing and cosmic abundance. Good fortune is coming to me. My thoughts support my divine perfection. And I am aligned with my fifth dimensional blueprint. Okay, Emerald Dragons, what is most important for me, the collective, and everyone watching this video to receive? What messages need to come forward? Okay. Um, so we, we worked with the third eye a little bit ago with the golden solar dragon, I believe it was. So yeah, so we're still working with this energy. This, um, emerald dragon and its energy will clear our emotional body and um, along with Raphael that energy help us to develop and develop our third eye chakra which is intuition 
and receiving messages like the ones we are receiving today and continually. Um, this will help us to receive our own divine intuition, personal to us, and receive and benefit from that of others. Uh, let's see. This dragon will also clear our emotional body so that we can be free to love, forgive, and open our hearts. So using the energy that we have already um, brought in, this is very important. We need to have our hearts open to receive. So if we have energy that is stuck in there, anywhere in our emotional body, but especially our heart, with, you know, which can happen when we do not forgive ourselves or others, then we cannot receive what we need to receive. And, yeah. Let's see. Um, this will also help you retune anything that is out of alignment in your thoughts so that it will support your divine perfection and your mission and purpose for being here. And uh, this is important, I, I guess, because we were calling in all this masculine energy and uh, like I said, it was important that we have pure thoughts and intentions, which means we need to retune our mental body if our thoughts are not in alignment with that. So this energy will help with that also. Um, this allows us to be all that we can be. And um, open up to the true cosmic abundance that we all share. So that we can realize that we all, I know we are all trying to create abundance. I'm trying to create abundance. But abundance not only, and this is a lesson for me too, because at various stages and times in my life I have forgotten this. It caused me much uncomfort and distress and then made my energy feel a lot more heavy and dense and perpetuated the whole dynamic. But we need to remember that abundance can also come from other sources besides financial and money. Um, it's very important at the bottom of this. It also says, you know, be grateful for all that comes your way but also for all that you already have because, okay, I'm working on financial abundance. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it isn't. So at the times when it's not, it's helpful for me to remember that I have the resources to pay for where I'm living. I have the resources to record this video. I and my son have the resources to buy food and have a place to stay as much as sometimes the energy from my job weighs me down, but that's because I let it do that. Um, that job provides me the monetary abundance right now for the stuff that I am enjoying and utilizing right now. And then out in nature, nature is very abundant. If you go out in nature, actually, I think today, the universe is telling me, today, go out in nature. Experience that abundance. Look around and see how abundant everything is, how much stuff there is in nature that just is there and exists, and it all works together, and all creatures benefit from that. Um, and then it's continually replenished minute by minute, second by second on a daily basis like infinitely and you know with the changing seasons we can see that so you know we're now moving into winter right we're in the fall so the old is kind of something that came to me that old is being transformed and it's going to go away for a while be covered by white snow 
so that it can be reborn again in a new way in a better way and that is good fortune so with all these innovation and change happening and uncomfortable feelings and uncomfortableness and all the crap that's happening to me, you, everybody um, on the other side of that if we cannot get stuck in it and move through it with as little resistance as possible there is that cosmic abundance there is good fortune and it is coming but we have to allow it by moving through and past all of this other stuff and that you know it's a cycle and it's a balance so there are times of extreme good fortune and there are times of extreme not good fortune like it really really sucks and I'm speaking from experience here I am 100% speaking from experience there have been times in my life even recently where it has really 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 sucked it was really I know you can't swear on YouTube so GD uncomfortable right very GD uncomfortable for me but when I finally got off my astro and moved through it and learned the GD lesson there was this peace this joy this harmony this abundance that came back into my life it was always it was always there but I was not perceiving it because I was focused on the GD uncomfortableness of the crap that sucked so anyway uh yeah i just i had to say that the universe wanted me to say that for me and for you because we're all connected and i know that if you're watching this video you have probably had some gd uncomfortableness present in your life it's impossible not to have had any of that the key point here is to come back to your heart center and realize that everything is on always going to be okay it's never not going to be okay and you are going to be fine you may have to move through some crap to realize that and get back to the i'm okay part but it's not it never goes away is what i'm saying because it's all based on your profe your perspective and how you perceive everything which is another lesson I am also currently learning. Um, let's see. Um, why don't we... Oh, and this, uh, this also will pull back the Veil of Illusion. Now, the Veil of Illusion is that you have to chase after and get the abundance. You have to chase after and get whatever it is you're searching for. No, you do not. It's there. You need. It's always been there. You need to align with it and see it. But if it's covered up by the illusion of it not being there, the illusion of the other crap that's going on in your life, you are not going to see it. Therefore, you will not experience it. But all of this is always there all the time. It's like the great central sun. It's, it's always there. <laughs> Like, you literally, if you forget about it and you don't see it, it's still there. It does not go anywhere just because you don't see it. So that's kind of what is happening. This message from this energy is trying, is asking me to tell you, to tell me to help us remember that. Okay. Um... And also, by pulling this card, it is, they want us to, this energy wants us to realize that we are ready to receive all of this healing, love, and wonderful things that are coming our way. We just need to relax and invite it to come in. It will not come in unless we invite it. Which means if we're resisting it in any way, consciously or unconsciously, it's not going to come in. It won't. So 
That's why we are opening our hearts. That's why we are clearing our emotional body, forgiving, um, all of that is so that we can be open to receive what is coming to us and to everybody. So if you want to receive, open up the door and let it in. And I'm not only talking to you, I am talking to me because a lot of times I will close it off and I'll shut the door and then I'll be mad because it's not coming in. Well, it was me that closed the GD door. So anyways, um, so why don't we go ahead and do some more breath work again. And this is again with the third eye. So there's a lot of third eye energy, a lot of masculine energy, a lot of, um, Helios, great central sun, Metatron creation energy. Just putting that out there. It's, I noticed it. So, um, had to say it. So let's go ahead and breathe into our third eye again. But this time, we are inviting the Emerald Dragon to come in and open that door and breathe life and energy into that chakra. Let this dragon come in and let it breathe life, energy, fortune into the chakra, opening it up and clearing it. And as you breathe out, clearing that chakra, opening it up so that it can receive more and the veil can be cleansed and, or I mean, the veil can be <laughs> removed. And then you can clean your spiritual window so you can see. My last final time, I'm being called that we should chant OM to have that sound vibration help break open everything and clear it and open up more. OM. That was cool. I saw some green there. Green dragon, thank you. All right. All right, so thank you, Emerald Dragon. <sighs> All right, we have three dragons and so five more dragons. What is the next energy that we need to bring in, receive my session guidance from, that will help us on this journey today, in these energies, and every day? Dark Blue Galactic Dragon. All right. dark blue galactic dragon. <laughs> okay. Oh. Ninth dimensional dragon, that's why. I was in the lower dimensions, apparently. Looking for you there. Alright. 104. Okay. This dragon will help you listen to the voice of the universe. 
ignite the codes of your master blueprint, access cosmic wisdom, and enter higher service. These dragons shimmer with golden sparkles of cosmic wisdom, for they harness the light of the stars, planets, and constellations. When we are ready, they touch us with this light, enabling us to embody the illumined energy and wisdom they contain. While many of us are now able to attune to the night's dimension, it is still an awesome light filled with joy, love, and wisdom beyond our current comprehension. Dark blue galactic dragons can send bursts of this cosmic searchlight through us to ignite the hidden codes of our master blueprint, the seventh dimensional light of our soul, so that we can listen to the voice of the universe. Remember, our soul must be at least 7th dimensional for us to receive permission to incarnate on Earth. This is interesting. Um, your soul journey has taken you to the stars and beyond. The dark blue galactic dragons now invite you to communicate with masters of the universe, the intergalactic council, where you can contribute your energy for the smooth ascension of the planet. It is time to listen and serve. Ask the wondrous dragon who has come to you to tune you into the Intergalactic Council, where you will be offered the honor of petitioning the Council. Decide whether your petition is for the welfare of animals or humanity, or to assist with the ascension of the planet. Then ask the dragon to take you to the Council to present your petition. Dark blue galactic dragons will also instruct you during meditation or sleep. This will enable you to serve in a galactic capacity and will hugely expand your energy fields. Okay, affirmations? I am listening to the voice of the universe. Um, the codes of my master blueprint have been ignited, and I am accessing cosmic, win cosmic wisdom and entering higher service. Okay. Well, um, What out of this do we need to know today to help us navigate through these energies, through the ascension of the planet? Okay. Well, let me see. One that jumps out at me right now is listening to the voice of the universe. Well, we've opened up all of this, and... Um, now we need to listen to the messages and guidance that we are receiving from the universe. Um, so this, um, this energy will ignite our codes that are being activated or they're dormant and needing to be activated within us um, so that we can listen to this voice it's always there you can always hear it if you are open to it and you choose to and so it can come from you know anything it can come from the trees and leaves outside it can come from something you heard someone say from this video from the dragons we're talking about from a voice inside your head, from a song you hear. It can come from anywhere. Um, if you're truly tapped in and listening, then you can pick up on that. Um, but it's a subtle voice. It's not a voice that is loud and forceful. So that's how you can discern whether or not what you are hearing is truly from the voice of the universe. Also, you can ask your heart if it resonates. And, you know, if you have developed your intuition enough, you can sense whether the origin of what you receive. Uh, let's see. Um... Well, basically, this energy is asking us to enter higher service and help the planet on its ascension path and help each other. Um, 
And, you know, if you choose to, you can communicate with these masters, these ascended masters, like Metatron, um, I don't know, Jesus, Buddha, any ascended master that you can think of, and, or, yeah. And, uh, you know, however you wish to do this. I haven't tried this yet. I'm, I may at some point, but you can, I guess, ask these, um, this energy when you turn it, or you can ask the intergalactic council and these energies through meditation and tuning into that energy. You can ask them what your purpose here at this time is for that ascension. So, I mean, maybe you were put here to help animals um, in some fashion. Maybe you were help put here to help and guide humanity or assist the ascension of the planet in some other way. It doesn't have to be a grand thing like I'm going to become uh, the next Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean that. It means that you do your part, whatever that is for you, however the universe has presented that to you, the Intergalactic Council, any, any force of energy out of this mate, this, um, cosmic matrix not the matrix that we created uh, there's a difference the cosmic matrix the divine matrix that whatever part of that you resonate with and receive guidance from ask that what you need to be doing here I discovered <clears throat> through I didn't necessarily ask physically like you can but I paid attention to the signs, I paid attention to my intuition, and I discovered that, that my part has largely to do with sacred geometry and talking about the connection between science and spirituality and talking about oneness and connection and helping people realize the true nature of reality through my art and now through communicating with the energy of the dragons and any other energy that else that wants to come anything else that wants to come through with my YouTube videos I'll be doing other things not just this dragon segment where I will be presenting my information in a different way but I do this every morning and I benefit from this energy and It helps me get in in tune with it so um, that's why I'm sharing this but whatever that is for you and however you choose to do that but you need to tap in to that energy however you can however you resonate to receive that information and get an intuitive sense of what your part in all of this is um, so yeah, all right. I think that is what wanted to come forth from that. All right. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have three more dragons to bring forward. On this day. All right. What else needs to be revealed today? What energy? What dragon? What message will benefit myself, humanity, the collective, and anyone else watching this video?
What the hell? Imagine that. Sunshine Yellow Dragon. Okay. Let's see what Sunshine Yellow Dragon has to say about things. Okay. This energy will help you help animals. Serve animals, heal, respect, and understand them. We share our planet with a great variety of creatures who are all on a soul journey, just as we are. Like us, animals come from a myriad of systems and planets. They all incarnate on Earth to experience, learn, teach, and serve. Our task as humans is to cooperate with, look after, and learn from the animal kingdom. Fifth dimensional sunshine yellow dragons work with the Archangel Freya, the angel of animals. They send bursts of sunny yellow light into the auras of those of us who love and honor animals and help us to assist and heal all creatures. They are currently working assiduously to touch the hearts of those who need to understand how to treat animals with respect. They also bathe animals in their sunshine yellow light to soothe and heal them so that they can fulfill their soul destiny. Drawing this card invites you to open your aura and see and allow your to and allow sunshine yellow dragons to pour light into you, containing the keys and codes to understand at a profound level all the creatures of this planet. Then send these dragons to all humans who need to change their relationship with animals. See the minds and hearts of these people blazing glorious yellow as they expand the perspective and see animals for who they truly are. It is also important to visualize all the animals in the world being touched by sunshine yellow dragons and lighting up with hope. Be a sunshine yellow bridge of light along which these dragons can travel to help animals everywhere. You will accrue good karma as you assist your fellow creatures. Affirmations. I am helping and serving animals. Let's see. Well, you know, let me see here. I am respecting, healing, and understanding the animals and other creatures that I share this planet with. That's a good one. Okay, what needs to come forward? Okay, well, the one thing, so I'm getting better at listening to the first thing that pops into my head when I ask these questions, because sometimes I try to analyze it and my ego gets in there and it says, no, you need to talk about this. This is what everybody wants to hear. No. What I am um, being called to talk about right now, before I get into anything else, is... Um, I'll keep getting an image of a spider. Well, so I guess you could say that in addition to a few other animals, the spider is one of my spirit animals. So um, I see these animals everywhere. I currently have one living on my porch. It's been a nice, beautiful web out there um, on my light, my porch light. And it's always there to greet me every morning and every night when I come home from work. <laughs> and um, it must be a nocturnal spider because I never see it in the daytime. But right at dusk, it appears, and right before the sunrise, I see it out there. And I believe it's guarding my energy in my space, especially within my house. That's just me. Um, so with uh, having said that, I guess um, this particular reason this particular animal came into my awareness is that when we're healing, understanding, and respecting and serving animals, we're not limiting it to those animals that we like. <laughs> okay. Um... I developed a very 
profound and meaningful relationship with the spider. So, um, but I know many people view them as pests. They view them as they're afraid of them. And, you know, like every other animal on this planet, they are trying to survive, okay? They, they want to live. We want to live, right? So their defense mechanism, unfortunately, is they, they're so small, um, all they really have is they can bite something and then inject poison into it. <laughs> So, um, but they, when you, if you keep in mind that they are not doing it on purpose, they are not doing it because they're crawling around, they're saying, hey man, who can I go bite and kill today? No, that's not what's happening. They had a reason for doing that. Either they were eating, because we have to eat too, so they bit another animal and they ate it um after they killed it okay so you know we go out and like shoot deer and stuff which i'm i don't resonate with that but you know that's for another story but i mean every day we are even if we're eating plants we're doing the same thing we're taking the life of something else on this planet so the we can live okay so that's what has to happen right now so the animals are doing the same thing even the spiders or you know they're defending themselves you know same like if I'm walking down the street and then I see somebody that's trying to rob me and they pull out a knife I can either run or I can you know whip out my knife or something I don't know but then it's self-defense because something came at me and not I didn't I wasn't walking around saying oh, okay who can I like beat up today no I you know what I mean so I don't know where I was going with this probably so the spider yeah I mean those are its reasons for doing what it does that's it it doesn't know I mean maybe it knows but I mean it doesn't contemplate you know going out and like murdering something or someone and killing with its venom so I mean when you come at it from that but also they benefit the ecosystem or they wouldn't be here I'm Anyway, okay, so that was like a tangent I went off on, but I mean, I guess my point when I was trying to say is that we need to treat all animals with respect. This is, I guess, a reminder to do that. Um, it doesn't matter what they are and what you perceive they may or may not have done to you. So, um, yeah. Um, so keeping that in mind when you are working with this energy and sending out energy to help and heal the animals of the world that we share this planet with, um, you can also remember that we are also part of that ecosystem in we're in a way we're animals too so if you harm that that aspect of yourself because we're all fractals of each other come, come at it from that angle then if you harm that aspect of yourself you're harming yourself too um so i guess that's what this energy is trying to get you me and everyone else to understand that um if it happens that you accidentally step on a bug or you have to kill and eat an animal or you whatever has to happen um just be conscious of your motives for be conscious of your motives and um 
your state of mind when you are interacting with animals, I guess, and the other creatures we share this planet with. Um, and I might do a segment on spirit animals because, well, you know, these are these creatures are here to help and assist you and tell you something. Um, like this spider is a symbol of creativity and patience. Um, and so when I see a spider, I'm like, oh, I can be like, oh, um, I am a creative force with the energy of the universe. What am I creating? Or maybe I'd be like, oh, I haven't created an art piece in a while. Maybe the spider is reminding me to create a piece of art. Maybe the web is reminding me to be patient and to remember that everything is connected and, you know, things like that. Um, so, you know, we can do a short prayer and send this dragon energy to the people that need to remember and um, realize their connection to animals. And uh, the people that are helping to heal the animals, um, people that need to respect animals too. Yeah, let's just do that. All right. It's my intent. It's drawing this card and working with this energy that this energy be sent to all humans that need to remember that we are all connected and they were all fractal aspects of each other and that we need to treat the aspects and the fractal energy of the animal kingdom with the same respect that we treat ourselves with and our fellow human beings with. And to remember this extends to all animals, not just the ones that we like and um, that we feel deserve it because all animals deserve to be respected and understood. Okay. That was very interesting. Okay. Now we have two more. Two more dragons. Also, maybe I've had a lot of flies running around in here, and I'm not super excited about flies everywhere, but. I need to respect the flies too <laughs> and understand maybe understand why they are showing up okay let's go ahead and call in the last two dragons our messages need what further messages do we need to hear today? Wow, well, how about that? Aquamarine dragon from Neptune. Okay. Okay, 
So before I do this dragon, um, I need to go and gather some more props and yeah, so I will be back in just a minute. All right, so I'm back. All right. <clears throat> so this particular dragon, before I do the reading, I want to bring in the water energy and also mention that um, this particular dragon and we will do this ritual in a minute. Ask us to drink a cup of blessed water. So, um, water is a great conductor of energy, and we are mostly water. So, uh, having said that, um, you can imprint water with energy and codes and healing and well that's all energy too so liter so basically you can imprint water with energy and so that is my blessed water you can say a blessing over it as well but um i don't know if any any of you have heard of dr emoto and his research with water and energy and holding energy but um, basically, like everything else, energy is imprinted on it, and it holds that energy, it stores it, and that energy transforms and builds the framework of whatever it inhabits so the energy that we put into water does the same thing which in turn will do the same to us because we're conducting that energy throughout our bodies plus so that is also changing our cellular structure and our makeup and our um our physical being so it's very important as we've seen through all these cards that what we put in to our vessel facilitate healing and harmony and peace because that is what we are going to pick up and utilize and it will change our molecular structure and makeup. So um, I have a friend and I will link her stuff in the description below but she has used this technology to imprint energy, light codes, healing codes, information into water. And then when we drink this water, then that energy and information is being run through us and imprinting on us. And yeah. So, um, the idea is the codes are in this little thing here and when, and you can do this yourself too, if you want to pick up water, you can go ahead and with intent, intend your information to be imprinted into the water and then utilize it. This particular one was imprinted with codes and energy frequency for emotional peace. So, and it only takes one drop and you can put into your, well, for this anyway, you put it into a regular glass of water and then it changes the molecular structure of the water and then when you drink that, it in, changes, it in turn changes your energy frequency and your molecular structure and the water that's circulating around 
in you. So, um, I have poured myself a glass of this and we will drink in that part of the reading when I come to it. Okay, so, Aquamarine Dragon from Neptune. This energy will enable you to access your deepest soul wisdom. Spirituality and wisdom are available to you. Develop your psychic abilities and receive ineffable soul knowledge. Neptune is the watery planet of advanced spirituality and enlightenment. The aquamarine dragons from this illumined planet carry the light of the universe, which contains spiritual information and knowledge. They will also approach us and ask us to tune into them so that they can download this light into our energy fields. This will enable us to take transformation and know how to, or this will enable us to take information and know how to apply it wisely. As these gentle dragons flow around us, they also help us to access more of our ineffable soul knowledge and wisdom and pass it to others humbly, sincerely and honestly. They have the ability to pour liquid light into us, which builds our crystalline light body more quickly and enables us to shine. They also enhance our psychic development by enabling our psychic chakra, chakras to open up more easily. We may find our subtle knowing is heightened after encountering them. Aquamarine dragons from Neptune are water dragons. They will flow around you, surrounding you with their aquamarine energy and awakening your psychic abilities connect with them often for each time you do so they will light up more of the keys and codes of your true essence this will bring your soul contentment and a sense of your divine magnificence and you will experience higher levels of enlightenment and see your world and the universe through different eyes your guidance is to drink a glass of blessed water as you tune in to these dragons then they will be able to touch you more profoundly Okay. Affirmations. I am accessing my deepest soul wisdom. Spirituality and wisdom are available to me. I am developing my psychic abilities and receiving ineffable soul knowledge. What do we need to know from this energy and this dragon? What messages do I need to, what information do I need to pass along? Okay. Okay, well, let's see. So, I believe this dragon has come because up to this point, we have, I have downloaded and shared and transmitted all of this information to you and to me and to anyone else that comes across this video. There has been a lot of information shared in this video and um, I believe the dragon came to help me and all of you to be able to know how to apply this information to our lives wisely obviously but you know it's great to have information to receive information but how do you apply it? Well, this energy, or I mean this, dra this dragon and its energy will facilitate that process for you, which is going to be unique for every individual, myself included. The way I apply this knowledge may be completely different from the way you apply it. 
and utilize it. And should you choose to share it. So, um, let's see. Oh yeah. So yeah, it, it also mentions that, or I'd also like to mention that, um, but yeah, like I said, once you receive knowledge, um, it is meant to be shared. So, you know, you're not meant to hold on to it. Information is energy and it needs to travel. So it came to you and used you as a vessel. And so then it's up to you how and when to let that information travel where it needs to go and let that energy, which information is energy, to let that flow. So, uh, let's see. And we need to do that with wisdom because, you know, we have to be conscious of why we are transmitting that energy and how we're doing it and in the manner we're doing it in is it for the highest good of all is it benefiting us and everyone else um yeah so but so not all information obviously I'm talking about information from source energy and divine energy. Um, I'm because you, you can receive information from other sources as well, and so it's important to discern where that energy came from and what and where that information came from, and then you decide then whether or not it should be shared. Um, so that's the wisdom part. That's the wisdom part of it. Is this energy meant to be shared? Um, and then how to do that in a wise, compassionate, loving way. And honestly, and sincerely. Um, yeah, so. Um, uh, so this also, in the third eye chakra, is the psychic center as well as the crown. Um chakra so this dragon also opens up your um opens up those chakras more or it helps you to open up those chakras more easily so that you can receive and transmit that information from source when the time is right and when it needs to be shared because i guess you know also timing is also a large part of that um So, when you connect with this energy and information and let it flow through you, it will also light up your own key codes and your own true essence, which you can also then share. Um, and it will bring you contentment and peace because are coming from that place of peace and it's helping you connect with your divine magnificence and your divine essence and you will also through this process begin to see the universe in your own world through different eyes so why don't we go ahead and so what I would like to do is we will go ahead and open um, being, I'm being called to open up the crown chakra and uh, well I don't know what we'll um, well we, we already opened the crown and the third eye chakra so I will just do a little bit of breath work 
I'm being called to do the crown chakra. And then I will receive, and hopefully you, you along with me, and if you choose to do so at the same time, or if not, um, as I drink this water, then I will let it infuse me with the key codes and light codes and the energy. And this will facilitate the energy of the aquamarine. This will uh, help myself and you as well um, receive that knowledge and that energy. So. I am calling in through bringing in this water into my being the energy of the aquamarine dragon to help me tune into that energy and receive what I need to receive. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Aquamarine Dragon. Okay. The last, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, the last and final dragon then. I will call this energy in. We'll talk about it and then we will close this video and this communion with dragons and dragon energy with a prayer and final breath work. All right. is the last and final energy that needs to come forward today. Myself, humanity, and everyone watching this video. Crystal Yellow Dragon. What does the Crystal Yellow Dragon have to say today? This dragon and its energy will open you to higher learning and wisdom. Expand your crown chakra for illumination and walk the higher spiritual path. Okay. Crystal yellow dragons clear space around the crown chakra of animals and humans and then illuminate the chakra and set it glowing. This enables the angels and source itself to see us. Each of the thousand petals of our crown chakra can be extended to connect with a particular star, planet, or universal energy. However, in order for the petals to reach out, the light around them must be pure, so crystal yellow dragons work rather like fairies, who blow away the lower frequencies around the plants, round plants, so they can grow freely. Crystal yellow dragons not only have huge open hearts, but they also carry fifth dimensional wisdom codes for the universe and can download them into those of us who are ready. They work with Archangel Jophiel to light up and expand the crown chakras of all of us at a fifth dimensional frequency. 
They then cooperate with unicorns to connect the petals into source into sources of universal wisdom and knowledge. Receiving this card suggests it is time for you to walk a higher spiritual path. Crystal yellow dragons are swirling around your head, freeing the petals of your crown chakra from lower energies, allowing them to open and illuminate them. These dragons remind you that you are a being of the universe. The ultimate is to become a cosmic master, so step on to the diamond path. The crystal yellow dragons will ensure you connect with those who are ready for the light that you carry. When you meet people, your light will automatically light up. The key codes light up. The keys and codes of mastery latent within them. The time for higher service is now. say crystal yellow dragon regarding the energies of today what we talked about so far and what will be most beneficial for myself humanity planet collective consciousness and helping us navigate through today's energies and the energy of the full moon that is in progress all right okay so affirmations i am open to higher learning and wisdom my crown chakra is expanded for is expanded for illumination i am walking the higher spiritual path okay so I've been uh, being called to point out that um, this particular dragon came forward to support the energy that an opening of the chakras that we were working with today, particularly the crown chakra. This chakra, along with the third eye, has been the theme of all of this energy today. So let's see. seems important to me that I mention that this dragon is also helping us to connect and open up to the masculine energy that we drew in, the energy of the cosmic abundance, the energy we called in from the blue galactic dragon, and especially the aquamarine dragon, because I'm not sure, I don't know much about astrology, but I'm willing to bet that somewhere in the uh, astrological chart for today, Neptune is doing something. <laughs> so, um, so I'm. We were being called to connect to that, obviously, with the Aqua Marine Aqua Marine Dragon from Neptune. Um. And also, yeah, so, so it seems to me we're working with that energy today. This uh, dragon will help us open up to and connect with that. Um, so this energy will blow away all the lower frequencies in our auric field so that we can connect with everything that has happened so far. Um, and also we are continuing to expand our crown chakra, which was the chakra for today. <laughs> so yeah, you literally, as my favorite, um, spiritual teacher always likes to say um, you cannot make up this shift <laughs> literally I, I I did not 
you know, <laughs> sit down and plan all of this to happen the way it did. Literally, it showed up the way it did. On its own, literally, it. everything that's happened this morning leading up to this video, yeah. So, anyhow, um... I, that was a side note, just saying it. Um, let's see. So we are being called to walk a higher spiritual path by, and so tying it to the theme of this video and the earlier talk I gave at the beginning. Um, part of that walking that higher spiritual path is innovating and moving with the changes that are needing to take place as we move along on our spiritual path and as we climb higher in order to climb higher we need to change and as we climb higher in consciousness and on our spiritual path we cannot continue <laughs> with extra baggage so that extra baggage obviously is the stuff that is no longer serving us and the stuff that we need to let go of and change and transmute so that we can fill our backpack with the stuff that we collect at the next level. <laughs> but so every, every time that we climb and we keep going, we're going to have to not, we're going to have to let go and empty out our backpack so that we can put the next highest thing in there not that that thing was bad because it did serve us like I said you saw yeah like the stuff that we're releasing that's not serving us it inherently wasn't bad it was there when we needed it and it served us in some way but then as we climb up our spiritual path then we don't need that anymore and there is a something better that will help us more on our path but we cannot receive and put that in our backpack until we take the other thing out all right um so we also are being reminded that we are a being of the universe we are fractal pieces of that right there and so as such we have to keep that in mind when we are moving along our spiritual path and so this um crystal dragon will also help us to meet the right once we tap into it and receive and accept the messages and the guidance that it is bringing to us it, this energy will guide us to the people places and situations that are ready for the light that we are carrying um you know law of attraction we attract where we are. So if we are on this path of light and ascension, the, long, the further along the path that we walk and the higher consciousness that we go, we're going to start to attract the people and situations that are at that level and that are ready for that. Uh, let's see. And then it's uh, reminding us that the time for higher service is now because we are 
in the middle of that ascension as a planet and as a piece of this cosmic creation and of this fractal universe that started with source wanting to know itself. So we are getting to know ourselves so that source can get to know itself through us. Well, um, that is that. So let me choose the dragon that is the predominant energy for the day. And then we will close with a prayer and then chakra balancing. And then I invite you all to go out and be inspired leaders. Move with the changes and innovations occurring within yourself and others. I will do the same. And I will see you here next time on Dragon Time. All right. I will also be doing a full moon edition, like actual full moon edition of Dragon Time, where I will go through a, my version of the process or way of calling in the energy and releasing with the energy of the full moon. Because we cannot, like I earlier in this video, you know, we are approaching that time where we need to empty out our backpack so that we can fill it again. <laughs> so, um, and we cannot fill our backpack with new um, manifestations and blessings and experiences without first emptying that out. And the full moon is a great way to do that. Lots of fire will be happening in that because fire energy, dragons. So, all right, here we go. I might do it this way. I'm going to open it up and we will choose. <laughs> choose our dragon. Okay. <sighs> Which dragon energy today will be the most beneficial? The predominant energy to take away from this Dragon Oracle reading. Okay, dokie. Well, here we go. Wow. Not what as I was expecting, but congratulations, Sunshine Yellow Dragon. Apparently, the animals of this planet needed some assistance and some help today. So, thank you, Sunshine Yellow Dragon, for being there and sending your energy out to the animals of the planet. Okay. It's my intent today with talk, the rituals, dragon oracles, deck greeting, drawing of the cards, and the energy that came in to send this energy out to anyone needing it. In particular, paying attention to the animal kingdom, since the sunshiny all dragon has chosen to come forward out of the energy that I brought in. and what is most needed today. May all 
all this energy go out and assist myself and all everyone else watching this video not watching this video we'll watch this video later at a different time in your time zone different part of the world and for the collective as a whole and humanity so it is namaste All right, let me take a drink of the blessed water. I am feeling called to pour a cup of this blessed water again. I will drink it and then we will balance our chakras. And thank you for being a part of Dragon Time and Sacred Universe. being called to bring in that. Okay. All right, starting in, we are aligning all seven chakras all seven levels of consciousness, all seven energies that we called in today. Whatever time of the day it is for you. Starting with the root chakra, breathe in. Hold it there. Focus your attention on the sacral chakra and breathe out. Crown chakra, <laughs> breathing to the sacral chakra. Move it up to the solar plexus. The energy there. Breathe it out. up to the heart chakra Bring back in to the earth chakra and grounding ourselves into Mother Earth and the Earth Star Chakra. Namaste.